since I don't have Georgia winning the title, I don't have them winning the SEC. I've got Alabama winning the SEC. And then I want it to be noted in the order of history, you came in behind me and predicted Alabama to win the SEC. And that's how my journal will remember it. Why do we believe in Alabama? Because there are detractors, even in my building, even on my staff, there are detractors who say, this style of ball is not going to do it in 2023. I got thoughts. I think elite talent can still play any way it wants to and win if it executes. What do you say? Yeah, the execution part of that is critical. And there is this mindset. Uh, you joined my, my radio show with McElroy, even though he wasn't there last week, and we talked about this, that – for some reason, people just think that that style of football just can't work or be applicable anymore. I actually think that what it can do, if executed properly, can make some of those other things that you would like to do easier to accomplish. Play action, throw the football, bootleg, quarterback runs off of certain runs that you have. Now, you're, you're going to have to have a certain set of skill and a certain type of player to be able to go out and do that. And I, I go back to Alabama last year the last two, three years, just how quarterback-centric they were. And I'll give you a perfect example, Josh. Greg and I had a guy tweet into the show today. He's like, hey, Clay, Auburn fan here. How come y'all think with the same offensive line and the same offense that Alabama just going to figure out how to run it this year? Well, it's, number one, not the same offensive line. And I look at this in a very similar way that I did to Joe Burrow from 2018 to 2019. Joe Burrow didn't just get that much better. That's not what happened. Joe Burrow was given different opportunities through a different offense to prove how good he was at certain things. And you see that Alabama offensive line right there. I think they are going to be given a different opportunity this year through Tommy Reese. And that opportunity, Josh, is essentially going to be, hey, run duo. And then they actually run it or counter. And then they actually run it instead of maybe calling a run play 20, 25, 30 times a game, and that turns into a slant, or that turns into a go ball, or that turns into a hitch. Not being as quarterback-centric means more dedication to the run game, and I think the opportunity for the Alabama offensive line, the tight ends, the running backs to go out and prove that type of football can still be applicable. And when you look at a lot of the tempo-based offenses, one thing that does happen occasionally is they sort of run into a wall. With the new clock rules, an offense that maybe gives you a couple three and outs, now all of a sudden your possessions are shaved in half, if not by more. You better make those two or three possessions count that you actually have, not including the ones that you had been getting for the last five to eight years. The Burrow point's good because it's like, it's like an inverse in the direction 2018 LSU versus 2019 LSU. Well, 2022 versus 23 Alabama, those offenses may be going in different directions, but you're still talking about doing something you're best equipped to do and doing it at a high level. I remember that, though. That's not that long ago. So everyone was looking at Burrow and LSU. Remember, Bama went down there and shut them out in 2018. Shut them out. I remember being at the game. And so in 2019, people are shocked that how, how did this player, how did this offense that got shut out last year, how are they all of a sudden this? Well, the answer is very simple. Sometimes you don't need to overthink the room. You just said it. It's not. It's the same human. Like, if you, if you test his DNA, it is the same guy. But the same offense, absolutely not. Here's what people can't get their mind around. So you and I both feel the same way about what this offensive line will be this year. It's the entire key. I think that in the secondary, to me, is the entire key behind everything I predict Alabama to do. There are flat-out folks who, because some of this personnel was there last year and they were in the 100s and whatever advanced metric you want to circle, there's no way they could be dominant this year. You played that position. Why can they be dominant this year? Let's start with mindset, and let's take a couple of the individuals. Tommy Brockemeyer is at TCU. Amari Kite is out. Uh, Damian George is out. Tanner Bowles is out. I think there were a lot of guys, Josh, that kind of had a feeling of where they were going to go and what they wanted to be. And either they self-policed it in that room or Coach Saban had something to do with it or Eric Wolford had something to do with it, basically saying, if you don't want to be this kind of guy, if you don't want to be this kind of individual and you're not built for this, kick rocks. To go find somewhere else to play football because we're coming back next year, and by God, this is who we're going to be. Look at some of the things that Tyler Booker has been saying this offseason, that J.C. Latham has been saying this offseason. J.C., you visited with him in media days just like I did. They, they, they cannot escape 
telling people how they want to dominate, telling people how they want to go push them around, play bully ball, play murder ball. Hell, you even got the guys on defense that are talking about how the guys offensively want to go play this style of football again. So I think even though it's the same guys, their mentality has sort of taken over. You can't be someone who comes in the room that's not a starter, that's not projected to be someone that gets meaningful snaps and enact yourself on everybody else. And I think as Tyler Booker went on last year and as Latham went on last year, they became those guys in that room. So now they can step up to the front of the room and say, this is who we are. This is what we're going to be. And if certain guys don't like it, they leave that room. And if everybody else doesn't get on board, they're not going to be a part of what that offense is going to do. So I think it was a little bit collective. But I also think just because you say Tyler Booker was on that team last year, he wasn't a dedicated starter going in week one. We didn't talk about him last year like we are this year. You look at the extra tight ends they're going to have and just that mentality of saying, hey, guess what? We're calling a run play here, and there's absolutely no chance our quarterback's going to pull it and throw a slant or run around or go find a pop pass to throw it to. It's going to be interesting to see because if that's right, that's the style of play that maybe – early in the season makes you look at it and say, this team's going to win a title. It's the kind of team sometimes that you sell on in September only to buy back in November, but radical change, man, radical change. 